Radio Shouty. After you've done all the stuff that you wanted to do in your career, what is it that you're trying to take it now? And do you feel like there's anything left to achieve or are you just saying, you know what, I done did the damn most and I'm enjoying myself? I'm enjoying myself, you know, and I just think, you know, I'm at a point of where I could do things uh, extracurricular and recreationally and just have fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um but I have been thinking about it lately, man. Like, you know, you know what will your, what will your leg- legacy be or what have you? So mm. I just put out, um, I just put out, a, um, a, basically it's a country album. It's called CeeLo Green, it's Thomas Calloway. Okay. I put it out last year. And um, people were really, you know, they were really uh, impressed with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, you know, because it, first of all, because it's me. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, you know, but it's, it's, Really well, well executed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you know, it, it sounds nostalgic. It sounds like the real thing. Truly, like you know, authentic. And uh, and I'm and I'm fortunate for that. So I just started thinking. I'm like, yo, since I don't got no no label obligations no more. Like I'm a free agent. I like to call what I'm doing now. Just doing deals, doing one offs here and there. I like to call it one man Wu Tang. You know you <laughs> so instead of those first albums when I had to try to beat everything I want to be in yeah. one album, I just put out multiple projects. You okay. know what I'm saying? So like, let's say no different than me doing the Go-Go project. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, you know, that's just a vibe. You know what I mean? Like, I, I fuck with Go-Go. You know yeah. Like, you know, the DMV fuck with me, so like, I'm going to go, you know, go set up, trap over there and fuck with them. See, Lo, um, that the song that Timo has, it's um, a self-destruction that he he, mm-hmm. he went and redid. And and B-Hi just asked you, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, you know, have you done everything? Uh, I have a suggestion for you. That song itself, it had Pastor Troy, it had Bone Crush, it had Ying Yang Twins, it had a bunch of every, uh, you know, a bunch of different artists. Goody Mob, what, what, what if Goody Mob did a whole album like that with all oh the Atlanta God. artists? And, you know, to, to, to really, you know, you already solidified, so I don't want to use that word solidify, but to to help the, you know, the world know artists that they don't know. Kind of like when right. Tupac got out and he did, he had E-40 them and Be Legit right. and he, you know what I'm saying, when he got out of prison on yeah. that, that album. Uh, a, a whole album, a positive album like that record right. with 10 or 15 records like that with your Young Thugs, with the Future, with your Ghetto Mafia, with your Kilos, with your... I think it's possible, man. Like, you know, and, and shout out to, um, to Mo, to T-Mo for even pulling that off because I yeah. was really just impressed with it you know um you know and with him because he's more of our reserved yeah. kind of member for the mm-hmm. most part so i didn't even really realize he had utilized his you know what i mean mm-hmm. you know his reach and his resources to, to even pull that off you know what i mean right. like until i shot my um my cameo for it i was like right. damn well you did that right you know what i mean yeah. so i think now he can look back on it in retrospect and just see what he's capable of like you know what i mean so uh Mo would probably a good, be a good person to, to, to spearhead it for mm-hmm. the sake of us collectively, man. I think it could happen. Right. I love to do it because, you know, I got love, love, love for the city, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Why wouldn't you own no cigar and pray for the week, pray for the sheep? Um, because when we, st- when we start doing a survival kit, our initial conversations were not everybody should be on, on every record. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Um, so no cigar we we really waited to let's say um pray for the sheep no i wasn't on that one um it was one of the other records though but i know future was supposed to get on something uh, but you know we were just trying to kind of like leave slots work it open, out work it you know out what i mean yeah for whoever was going to show up and you know fortunately dre did show up dre showed up at the last how the hell did y'all get dre on that song Patience, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. You feel me? But I had talked to him a few times. We all had spoken to him on separate, separate occasions. He was just like, "Man, I'm trying to, you know, I want to be a part of it." You know yeah. I mean? Like you know, um, I'm just looking for the right vibe. So I guess you know he was gonna either be on. Um, I think they played in Me Time. Yeah, played him uh, Amazing Grace. Mm-hmm. You know, um, he, he, he he eventually went with No Cigar. Yeah, you know what I mean. But. Uh, that, that was pretty much it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because cause, uh, some of the, let's say, uh, Survival Kit, the, the song, like, uh, I went over Sleepy Brown House, got that track. I'm like, I like this. Yeah. So I started it with a verse, and then I just 
emailed it to everybody. I'm like, you know, everybody chime in. So that was one of those studio sessions where I didn't go because mm -hmm. they were just putting their verses on something I had already kind of set in the motion. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and we were trying to, trying to be, you know, selective too because like we was in the thick of the pandemic too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, shit, I'm a chill man. But if y'all fucking with this man, <laughs> get, get on it. You know what I'm saying? You know, that's so we did a lot of stuff like that too. But that was it. When you go back to elementary school with Andre and you remember that little nappy headed kid playing with you in the sandbox and you think about the massive success that both of y'all experienced, did y'all see that in the sandbox or was that something that y'all talked about back then or and how did you feel when it became y'all's reality? Man, it was we it was three of us. It was me, Andre three thousand, and our homeboy. Tony Baker, but he since changed his name to Tony. You know that my cousin. Is it? You know, you know I'm a high tower C Low. Bro, y'all look alike too, man. I think about it, man. God. Yeah. I was gonna tell you, I was yeah. that's it, uh, I always feel like I said that B look like got them C bone a little bit. You don't hear that? <laughs> y'all favorite too, but yeah. you, you you bullshitting. No, Teresa, that's my daddy first cousin. And Tony, my cousin. So yeah. you know I ain't bullshit. Yeah. Man, rest in peace to Miss Teresa, man. Yeah, she that broke like us a, all up. That she was, was like a fairy godmother yeah. mother to me, man. And, yeah. you know, Tony lived right around the corner from me. Yeah. And um, we were a little group when we first started. So my mom, oh. I remember um, Otasco. Y'all remember that story? Yeah. <laughs> and then my mama got me a bass and a little, little, uh, little portable little amp with a shoulder yeah. strap. I would walk around his house and we play a little shit. You know I'm saying? He had drum sets. I used to love to go over Tony's house. So we was all friends. Yeah. So basically, Miss Teresa was making records and yeah. performing. She was a, uh, you know, she was like our Billy Holiday. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Our Diana Ross. Yeah. Here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? And and in Gibbs neighborhood, they had Miss Jean Carn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we had Miss Hightower. That's right. So Born basically early, around those around that energy really early on. I spent a lot of time over his house, so we really to answer your question, yeah. I thought that it would be Tony. Oh. He, he, he did get the first shot because he was four point oh four point oh. He signed yeah. to Pebbles, L.A. Reed's mm. um, yeah. his wife's label. Yeah, Savvy Records. Yeah, they wanted to sign me too. What time? But I didn't. I didn't do it with Savvy. Damn. Yeah. 